All right, this is Mike here. I'll try to keep the camera fairly steady. Showing you how to time your IDI diesel injection uh, pump, and the injection pump. Now, proper timing is very important for your, run, for, the, for your motor to run as efficiently as possible and to perform as well as it should. Uh, too, too advanced or too retarded, uh, you can run into numerous problems. Uh, you can do a little bit more research on that for the sake of time. I'll just say that. Uh, what are you going to need? I start off, I got like white out. Uh, I should probably have this all together, but white out, smaller turnbuckle. I got the turnbuckles from Menards. My custom 9 16th pipe wrench, which I ground down in order to get to the uh, injection pump bolts, how you're going to adjust it. A three quarter inch wrench and another longer turnbuckle. Of course, you're going to need a. Uh, this is my ferret meter, part number V765 01, and then a timing light with an advance. And I got this already all hooked up for, to save, uh, save time, but you. Of course, you want your timing light hooked up to your battery. You want your diesel. Uh, injection detector, your ferret timing meter, looped in your light. And this just, and if it's working properly, see if you can see that, it'll beep red. Make sure, and it's got a fresh battery, so I know it works. And I haven't cleaned it up, but this is just show for assembly. I got my piezo clamp, clamped down right here, snug. Uh, this is the ferret timing meter with a quarter inch line pickup important because they make two different part numbers maybe more but I know at least they make two different part numbers and you need the one with the quarter inch pickup that clamps on there this is the ground that clamps on uh, number one line there I made sh make sure when I do an actual test I clean up the line really good uh, both for this and the ground and then the test has to be done at 2000 rpms so I got my smaller turnbuckle here I'm going to take that on my throttle, and again, trying to do this one hand, I'm going to clamp it on, loop it on the throttle there, and then the bracket that goes behind it, I'll loop it on there. So, when you get to 2,000 RPMs, you can just adjust this, and that'll snug it up. So you got to be really careful when you're doing this. You want to make sure you have no wires hanging down. You want to make sure, obviously, your arm isn't hanging down. This fan spin at 2,000 RPMs, that can do some damage. So this gets really loud and a lot of air moving, so you just want to be safe. Uh, that's to set the uh, RPMs in place. Now, to find out your cur current timing, my motor actually has to be running. Uh, to get a timing reading on this, but on mine, I hit the advance button, and it would tell me, I believe it starts at zero, and I can adjust up or down from what I want my timing to be, or what I want to find out my timing's at, and I'll f flash it, and you're going to go down here if you can see or not. Okay, now you have a mark on your crank pulley itself. And right above the crank pulley, there's another mark on that where they did the, the for the old luminosity probe method. But when those two marks are lined up, uh, when you're flashing with the light, and that coincides with the the timing reading on your screen. So basically, I set this to seven at 2,000 RPMs at normal operating temp. I flash it, and those lines are are lined up perfectly at 2000 RPMs, that's my current timing. Now to adjust the timing, uh, passenger side is advanced, I believe. Driver's side is retarding it. So retarding it, advanced, that way. Uh, oh, the whiteout, should mention that. I mark the crank pulley mark and the, the other mark with whiteout so it's easier to see with the timing light. I just got, you know, nothing fancy, just a white out with a, a squeezable pen tip. And then to 
adjust your timing. I normally turn the motor off. I believe you're supposed to turn the motor off, otherwise you can potentially damage your IP, your injection pump. And use my pump wrench. I loosen the three bolts around it with the pump wrench. That's why I, I custom made this so I can get to those pump bolts easier. And this is where this turnbuckle comes in. There's a little tab. You can see right where that wrench, it's a three quarter inch wrench, right where that, that wrench sits, there's a tab. And that three quarter inch wrench sits on it perfectly. And I took a turnbuckle and I looped it around the wrench and I looped it around my filter housing. I have a little custom fuel setup, but you could probably even hook it in that hole on the filter housing bracket itself and uh, that should work out fine. I just did that because that was the first spot I saw I hooked it to the fitting. But that way you can move your pump in micro in increments. You don't want to, when you're just in timing, you don't need to move it a lot. I believe a dime width at a time. So I can just turn this turnbuckle and I can, you see the, the wrench moves. Basically what happens is when those, when you have this tight, before you go to adjust your pump, you loosen the pump bolts and then you, you adjust this and it'll move that pump with, uh, uh, like I said, micro increments. So you don't have to hold it. You know, hold it and tighten up a bolt. The other hand, you can you can get it right where you want it. You know, let's say it was too advanced. Okay, so I can I can back it off a little. And hold it there. Tighten my bolts up. Then turn the truck on. You know, of course, I disconnect all this when I'm when the truck's on so that none of this can fall down on the fan blade or anything you leave the obviously that rp uh, the rpm turnbuckle on and uh do another test um not a professional by any means it's just how i learned and what works for me and lots of reading on the forums and whatnot and I'm trying to think if i forgot anything you want to make sure your, your bolts are tight your pump bolts are tight when you're doing your test. Uh, you want to make sure it's at 2,000 RPMs. You want to make sure the line's clean. You want to make sure no wires are hanging. I think I covered anything. If there's any other questions, feel free to contact me or comment. Have a good day.